Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. George is in Florida with. Yes, with, I am with Jerry Pelletier. <laughs> All right. We got a great show coming up. We're going to talk to Jerry about his career and his studio and lots of other special stuff. We want your questions, your comments, your interaction here on voiceover body shop as we go coast to coast <laughs> right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to voiceover body shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters, and VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard in the West. And I'm George Whittem in the East. And this is VoiceOver Body on, Shop or VO. B.S. Yes. 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 Wow. <laughs> we are coast to coast. We, George, you are in West Palm Beach, Florida. I certainly am. Which, yep. I'm down here visiting Jerry Pelletier, who needed some studio tuning up, and this was a prime opportunity to be able to interview him in person. Yeah. So uh, wow. that's what we're going to do tonight. Yeah. Well, you, you've, you've, you've had quite an odyssey. We'll talk about that in a second. The, the, yeah. the big tree in front of the voiceover body shop, the huge star pine, gone. No, what happened? Oh, well, it was going to, if it was going to, it would, our gardener was like, it lo doesn't look like it's, it's going to survive. So maybe you cut it down. And if it <laughs> fell down, it would have taken out the front of our house. So we figured maybe a good idea to take it down. But we, they saved us a big slice of the trunk. And now we're going to have this really nice coffee table. Well, there you go. So we'll Silver put that. Lining. We'll put it up up front where the tree was, so it'll be a good reminder. Anyway, you have been all over, just like I did that mass odyssey last October after yep. Uncle Roy's barbecue. All yeah, across, my turn. it was your turn. So tell us about your trip. Yeah, well, the trip started off with a, a stint to uh, Montreal, where my uh, girlfriend's parents coordinated a trip so that we could all meet, and uh, I hadn't met them before. And my girlfriend hadn't seen her parents in three years, mainly because, well, they live in Iran. And it ain't that easy to fly to, to, to Pennsylvania, California, United States, anywhere is not easy. But they did make it to Montreal, and we all converged there for a few days, and that was a blast. Uh, it was really fun getting to meet them. We got to see the city together. It was really cool. Then, hopped on the train on Friday, zipped across and down in diagonal, uh, towards the southwest, I guess, towards uh, Toronto. The Via Rail. Uh, uh, on the Via Rail, which was yeah. great, you know, uh, comfortable. And uh, hopped off the train, and there I was in Toronto, and Graham Spicer was waiting for me and whisked me off. And uh, Via North commenced and uh, got to enjoy the Via North conference uh, all weekend. So we have a little package if you guys want to roll that, there's a little bit of a taste of what that conference looked like from my perspective. All right. So you want to give that, a, give that a look.
took me for some good vegan ice cream. And the food there is provided by Doobies, the uh, LA based vegan, sort of like vegan comfort food, diner food. Absolutely. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, you wouldn't want to eat it like every day. That's for sure. Eat something that's real sinful, but you don't want to feel like crap after you eat it. Give it a try. It's yummy. Okay, we're at Vino North and it is freaking total chaos. say goodbye to all our friends and grab a little bit of dinner here at the Gladstone in beautiful Toronto. I wish I had more time to spend here, but I'm grateful I got to be here. Thanks Dervla for bringing me in and Tanya and the team. It was a really good experience, this conference. And uh, if you want to do a little something different, a little smaller conference, a little more intimate, a little more informal and fun but still really well run this is one for you to check out vo north 2020 i hope i can be back george the tech Well, it looks yes, like, I, it was a great I totally time. grabbed a handful of Golden's mustard packets in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> I, I crave good spicy brown mustard. Yeah. Um, it was it was great. Uh, Tanya and, and Dervla um, ran it, just ran a really good show. And uh, the venue is probably, it was going to be different next year. This year was a smallish, uh, what do you call it, boutique hotel. It was really cool and quirky, but next year they want to go a little larger, and, the, and we were out, we were bursting at the seams. That's great. So, um, but a good event, and it wasn't like uh, there was five, 15 tracks of things. At the most, at any one time, there was maybe three things going on. That's so good. That's good. You didn't feel like you were missing out, and the and the, and the attendees were hungry for information. <laughs> I'm sure. I mean, they, they really were. When 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 Uncle Roy and I did our presentation, we were trying to be humorous and be lighthearted about it. But we were making jokes and they're staring at us like, when are you actually going to tell us stuff about microphones? 
<laughs> this isn't funny. We want stuff about Mike. You know, it was it was kind of like that. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I, enough about that. Yeah. Well, I I can't imagine that <laughs> you know that that whole thing without Pat Sweeney up in Toronto. That's uh, right. I mean, he was really the a, a driving force up there, and we we all miss him. He was. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm glad everybody had a good time. Next year, I'll sure go. did. And Graham put me up with Aaron. Uh, they took care of me. I just got to stay at their place. It was. I felt really well taken care of, as many everybody that was presenting there did, and uh, we're. Uh, we all want to do it again, so let's see what happens next year. Outstanding. All right. Well, now you're in Florida, and now we get to introduce our guest because you're visiting uh, a, a, a well-known voice actor. His is, this is a busy guy. I mean, he does commercials and lots of corporate stuff, but he's also on the radio. Let's welcome yeah. to VoiceOver Body Shop, <laughs> Jerry Pelletier. Well, welcome to South Florida during hurricane season. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm we missing schedule it. it right. <laughs> <laughs> we got lucky, right? We dodged. We dodged. You've yes. already dodged one big fat bullet, right? Yeah, that was a bad one. That mm -hmm. was a bad one. So knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you get much rain from that or any, any damage? We did. We got some squalls that came through and there's a couple others brewing out there right now. It's just, it's that time of year. I, I've got some hurricane panels up that uh, have been taken down. The bedroom that you're in tonight will have hurricane panels up. So it's pitch dark in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, the hurricane, uh, you, it's amazing when a hurricane will go across Florida, it's like someone takes a Brillo pad and just scrubs out sections of Florida, but they put it all yeah. back together and, and it's like, okay, op open up the uh, senior dining again. So <laughs> anyway, Jerry, welcome to the show. Great to see you again. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're, you're, you're a voice actor. You're on the radio. How, wh what brought you to this amazing career? Well, first of all, I got to say for all the VO talent out there, it, it what you guys do, and I've got to see some of the workings behind the scenes here. Uh, we are so lucky to have both of you and what you guys do each and every week. Uh, and I don't think that's said enough. Uh, we're lucky to have you guys. We really are. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. A uh, retired radio guy, but I did radio in Chicago and, and Sacramento and Houston and uh, and here, and then uh, retired probably about seven years ago. And then and, and really got into voiceover and boy, like most typical voiceovers, I made a ton of mistakes. I mean, bad ones. And, uh, you know, the learning what? curve was... Tell us a few. <laughs> what what, what mistakes <laughs> you made? Was, that, uh... Reveal us with the stories. <laughs> uh, I, I can't get into them. You know? <laughs> Some of them are still airing, and they just make me cringe. <laughs> um, but uh, then I, I just noticed at the grindstone. I'm not a, a big-time voice actor like most of you guys have out in LA out there. I'm just nose to the grindstone trying to work it out every day. I've been fortunate enough to sign with ACM. I recently signed with uh, William Morris and I just, just recently signed with uh, Stuart talent and they're all fantastic. And that's uh, kind of helped help my, my journey a little bit. So uh, yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of stuff for uh, Broadway shows, uh, Rudy mm. and Joan, uh, Rudy Gaskins and, yeah. and, and uh, Joan Baker know uh, this gal, Deborah Cox, and she was in uh, the Bodyguard, and I did the the voiceover for that. Oh, okay. Uh, that toured the country, and and coming up maybe to a a, a show near you, uh, Elf on the Shelf. I did all. The, oh, really? Yeah, I did the promotions, <laughs> uh, the voice for that too. <laughs> so uh, Jagermeister, I think I'm doing the they're the uh, NHL, the National Hockey League sponsor, but I, I do like a play by play announcer. Oh, really? Yeah, for the, hockey the character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So that's uh, right, running again this yeah. year. So uh, it's just nose to the grindstone, try to work it all out like most other VOs out there. Yeah. But there's something that's different about Jerry when it comes to being most other VOs. He's sort of like the center of a little voiceover universe down here. Explain how that came together. Like this this place that we're in, is it's Jerry's home and it's where he works, but it's not your typical home studio. You you use This is like a professional almost commercial studio people come in and yeah work here. It, i we're not like we're not la we don't have the amount of superstars that you guys do but we do have palm beach here which uh has uh, brings a, a lot of people in yeah there are a lot of people that live here uh so i've had that the people that i can talk about uh serena williams has been in the studio uh recording a couple things um uh, joe sip's been in here a couple times recording some yeah. things uh who else a Talia, who is the uh, the wife of uh, Tommy Matola, the guy who used to own and run producer uh, Sony Records. records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's a Grammy Award winning Tejano singer, uh, so she's been in here recording. And uh, Gino, he works at Second City out of Chicago. He does the uh, current uh, Wendy's commercials that are on TV. He's been in here. 
So because um, your location, you're you're near where people are coming in. But how are they finding out about you? This is the thing that this is what's curious <laughs> to me. I mean, you, you know, you don't Google these guys and send them an email. Like, how do they find you? I still have the old school ISDN. So I'm on the Digiphone website uh, <laughs> listing as a ISDN studio. So uh, when they're here, um, rather than drive all the way down to Miami for a studio, they've got me. So that's how they. So they me. find they they actually yeah. go on Digiphone and look for. They probably Google. ISDN Studios, West Palm or Palm Beach or something. Yeah, on Digifone, they have a list of all the ISDN Studios by yeah. state. Yeah. Hmm. There you go. All right. Well, let me ask you something. Now, since you came out of radio, and a lot of a lot of people try to get into voiceover out of radio, and I know there's a lot of radio people out there because I see them, you know, like, morning show at so-and-so. I want to be in voiceover. Uh, you know, that sort of thing. What is What was the hardest thing for you to make that transition from full-time, you know, doing radio to really doing voiceover because it's well, really not the same thing. No, I probably had a, a week long radio exorcism performed on me. <laughs> Just <laughs> and, a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it still continues. As you know, Dan, I, I mean, I've spent a lot of money on gear, but it, when it boils down to it, it it's, it's you and what you do. And uh, I've had a lot of different VO coaches and, uh, you just got to find the VO coach who's right for you. There's a lot of great VO coaches on there, but who's right for you? And, and Mary Lynn Wisner has just been absolutely spectacular for me. And she has been able to get through my thick skull uh, and actually got me to do me, which is the scariest thing for me to do being in radio. You know, you don't really do you, you do this form of you, but to actually get down and just do you and, and, and relax and do it. Uh, it's almost uh, like a caricature of you. It, it's still a work radio. in progress, but she's come a long way. But and right. I got to thank her for that. Yeah. So, what sort of stuff you've been doing lately? That you uh, like? I said, tell us about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, automotive. I've been doing that, and uh, like I've done the the band's visit, the Elf on the Shelf, which is coming to uh, uh, your neighborhood probably. Uh, James Hardy sighting. Uh, uh, I've done all their national stuff. So, uh, and, and for me, uh, working my way up the ladder when you want to actually go up and, and play with the big boys and get these big contracts. W when you actually land it, you have to understand that when you're doing the session, these people are in a studio in New York, LA, Chicago. And it's a, it's, it scares you when you look at the studio that they're going to, it's a million dollar studio. And the first thing the producer on the other end is thinking, okay, I'm hooking up to a home studio, which has them a little on alert right away. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I've got the studio bricks booth behind me because when they've rented that whole place and they've got, uh, creative people in there and copyright people in there and the studio producers, you can't have somebody coming by in a weed eater outside your door here or your window and, and, and they have to take a break. Uh, Cause this is a quiet place. I mean, you probably, did you record in, in the open room for a while? No. Or did you go right to the studio? Yeah. Break? I, I, I went yeah. to the studio bricks cause I knew yeah. I had to have it. Yeah. Um, and I, I call it quiet on demand. Yes. <laughs> when you're doing live directed spots, ISDN, that's quiet. That's when you need quiet on demand. It's working here. Yeah. Anything down, guys? Oh, it's back. Okay. Do we have a big dropout? I don't know. We'll edit it out. <laughs> okay. That's the fun, um, fun of live broadcasting. You know? What was the last thing you heard us say? Uh, I heard it all. Just the stream went out. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's recording. Okay. It's, it's still rolling. rolling. It's okay. Rolling. It's still rolling. <laughs> No, I was saying like, so, um, yeah, you need quiet on demand and, uh, that's when you make that kind of investment like Jerry did for, I mean, you've done some other things to improve. We're going to, we're going to talk more about this on the next show about tech talk. We're going to get more into the tech side of what's going on here, but you've made a lot of investments to make it better for sure. And so, I've helped a lot of people that have studio bricks booths that are, that are buying them and, and yeah. I gave them some advice. And the, the latest thing that I installed is here in the room outside of the booth. Uh, I just installed the Indo. Yeah, the Indo window ins insert. Yeah, and it's yeah. an acoustical glass piece that yeah. actually goes uh, in the window on the inside. And so when the weed whackers go by or the lawnmowers go by, it's just one more level of insulation because otherwise my house is it's a concrete block house. Really? Yeah. But the, the windows are the contractor windows, so they're very sure. cheap. You know what I mean? So that really helped. You probably didn't measure it, but was it quite a noticeable drop in the noise oh, at yeah. the ambient level? Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. If you're just joining us, our guest is Jerry Pelletier, joining us from West Palm Beach, Florida. And uh, if you've got a question for him about 
you know, about his career or how he makes his transition from radio to, uh, to voiceover or how he deals with his business, throw it right now in the chat room. And I think Mike Merlino is in there trying to take care of all this. And we'll get to that question. But right now we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with George and Jerry and me right after this. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. All righty. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the VOHeroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free. It's available online 24-7 at GettingStartedInRadio.com. That's GettingStartedInRadioVO.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get your get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course for you that you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Readers of Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Sure you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. And we're back. <laughs> Sounds familiar, doesn't it? We still laugh when we hear Bob Bergen doing Perky, uh, uh, doing uh, what? That, that wasn't Perky. That was Bird. Um, yeah. Tweety, yeah. yeah. Yeah, still doing that. Anyway, we're here on VoiceOver Body Shop. Our guest is Jerry Pelletier. And uh, George is in West Palm Beach, Florida, with him in his studio. And uh, in, in, in all the time that you've been doing VoiceOver, what's, what's your favorite stuff to do? Uh, it, probably a character. You know, I just don't get to do character stuff very, very often. And it's easier to do than just doing yourself. Right. Uh, which right. I've been trying to do. When somebody asks you just to do you, you're like, well, it, nobody wants to hear me. Uh, so if you can do a character stuff, you can actually live outside of what you are, and it's easier to do and, and uh, a lot more fun. Yeah. Uh, again, if you've got a question for Jerry or for George and me or, you know, just general marital advice, 
get it in the <laughs> chat room right now, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get to that. We got a question here from John Duffin, who asks, "Hey, John in Philadelphia, yeah, Hi, John, he's yeah. a client of mine." Yeah. He says, "Was there a technique that you remember that resonated to you that helped you sound less announcery and more you?" Mm. This comes from Mary Lynn, and it's it's her it's her toolbox of secrets, if if you will. So I don't know if I'm at liberty to to you know say. Hey, we've been plugging Mary Lynn all night. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, you can she's... throw one, throw out one good one. <laughs> Just for an example, you know, <laughs> it's the distracted read. And as a broadcaster, you know, Dan, you you know that we're usually on point. You just did a live spot there and you're on point and you read your stuff. But now it seems like they don't want that. They want this like distracted read, which goes against everything you and I were brought up to do. Yeah. So it's almost like you, you take like a Rubik's Cube and act like you just act like you're playing the Rubik's Cube while you're trying to read your copy. So you're reading it and you sound distracted. Right. And that's what they want. That's bizarre. Yeah, it, it is. Bizarre. It's yeah. I mean, it's 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 not easy. I mean, I, I've I've worked on it for years, and it's like, well, you know, I don't sound like an announcer. I am an announcer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you get these specs that say, and and the client says, no, no, no announcers. Why are you sending this to me? You know, I mean. <laughs> and the other make, thing is something simple, like in a sentence, you just repeat a, repeat a word twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. So if you're going to the store, you know, which is kind of like a distracted read, like if you're playing with the Rubik's Cube, you go, so, yeah. so if you're going to the store, you know, mm -hmm. just something simple like that. But she gives you all these tools yeah. that help a guy like me that can use them mechanically, make you sound more non announcer -y. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, and occasionally they'll ask for that. For the most part, though, commercially, they really are like no announcers. Like, why are people even sending that stuff in? I, it's kind of, kind of interesting that. That that's I'll tell you, on. The, the, the one thing I had to do a whole series, in fact, it was like two and a half years worth of shows for Oxygen Network, and it was all uh, these mass murderers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the BTK killer, right. uh, mm -hmm. uh, all of them. You just go down the list and, and it was a t you'd be in the booth for two and a half, three hours talking about these mass murderers. By the time you got done with that session, oh, you needed to needed to have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but people love those shows. I don't understand, but they love watching shows about mass murderers. It's true. They sell really well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't get it either. Yeah. It's entertaining. I mean, you know, reality TV and a lot of this stuff really has opened up the door for a lot of us in voiceover. There's a lot more documentary type work out there. Have you been finding a lot of that? Well, even like HGTV, which is more on the lighter side of things, you know what I mean? Um, uh, you have the Discovery Channel, yeah. There's there's some some back old backwoods boys, you know, brewing alcohol in their steels out back. Mm -hmm. You can do those too, you know. So there's a, a wide variety of types of narration that that are going on, and I love it. Yeah, uh, I do some on the on the Outdoor Channel too with some hunting shows. Oh, oh, those are exciting. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> but your well, job actually, is to make it exciting. <laughs> there's actually another thing that you do apparently which is golf pride spots yeah and and i am uh, i kill snakes for a living when i go out on the golf course uh, uh i don't golf but yes i've been doing golf pride for like five years uh uh, people tell me that commercials are on the golf channel but i never see it uh, <laughs> that's great well rick shockley uh he said jerry is my is my vo hero um he said he helped me a lot and and so he wanted to mention that you do those spots, but he thinks you're pure talent. So yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, there, there, from, from there are some great here. talent down here in South Florida. You got Doug Trickell, Sean Caldwell. Yeah. There, yeah. There's some great females down here that are fantastic who we had here at the house when Mary Lynn came in. Uh, so I am humbled to be even a part of that group. I mean, that's the cool thing about hosting an event like that is now you're connected to maybe a bunch of people. You There's probably, well, how would you know that they're there? unless you put it out there and said, come over and let's do a class. And now you maybe have a bigger network than you did before. Yeah, that was, that was a great day. And, and we uh, got some great relationships there. And I think, you know, the VO community, as you guys know, uh, very helpful to one another, you know, people can pick up the phone, you can call somebody and they'll, if they can help you, they will. That's the important thing. We got a question from Fred North. Why don't you take that one, George? Fred North. Um, Jerry, do you have, uh, Source Connect or IPTT, IPDTL in, in addition <laughs> to your ISDN. Um, so I'll add, this is a couple-part question. So 
<laughs> Are you using all of those technologies? George knows uh, what kind of a geek I am. Uh, but it, and, I, and you see these discussions time and time again on all the boards. Well, which yeah, one should I time. get? That, and that it's, one? it's yeah. not up to you. It's up to the producer uh, at the studio that you're going to. So yeah. I if you want to uh, play in the world that that a lot of these guys are playing in, you got to have everything. I've got old school ISDN. I've got a Telos uh, uh, phone thing here, but I can also use my my uh, ISDN as a, a, a phone patch, but I've got IPDTL. I've got Source Connect uh, standard. Uh, I've got them all. So it's like, you know, whatever they need, uh, I have, and you're able to run with it. Yeah. Got to have all the tools in your toolbox if they're all asking for it. What are you, find, what are you finding most uh, producers are looking for? Right? Uh, That's what I was going to ask. We're on the same page. Yeah, I would say, on you know, the same page. Yeah. it was, it was uh, probably 95% ISDN and, and, and a little bit of Source Connect, but now those roles have kind of switched a little bit. It's, it's more Source Connect. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, ISDN. I mainly use IPDTL when I'm on the road and I need a phone patch. Oh, you're using it as the phone patch. Yeah. You're not using it as a bridge all that much. Correct. Oh, okay. So yeah. if you're on the road and you get, do you just not do ISDN sessions when you're on the road? You book out or do you go to a studio Mostly. or how do you say Yeah, because it? you know you know as well as I do, if you're using the, the, <laughs> the hotel's Wi-Fi or your phone as a hotspot, um, you, you can get dropouts there. And, and uh, yeah. even with the Apollo and, and the gear that, that George has shown me, which really helps uh, in, in an environment that is not your studio, uh, you still can run into some issues that if you're connected to a pretty sophisticated studio and you, they've got talent there and they book time there, you don't want to waste their time. So uh, if, if it's a, a session like that, I'll, I'll find a studio close by and work yeah. it out. Yeah. Well, another thing is you're, you know, one thing about having a, an exceptionally good home studio, which you do now at this point, I mean, you've, you've put a tremendous amount of effort into getting it sounding good and quiet. So now you have a bar that if you have to travel is even harder to yeah. obviously match when yeah. you're on the road. So I would imagine you're probably trying to avoid having to do that very often. Like you're not going to pick up something, for example. Does I, that happen? I, I have. We were. I can tell you a really? story. We were at Fafcon last year, and um, a good friend of mine, Steve Kett, who's who's here tonight as well. Um, I had a session to do. We went up in the room, and they had construction going on at Fafcon Nine. If, if any of you went, uh, so there was jackhammers going off, and we were like on the third floor. And uh, I did the session, and and uh, fortunately, the the jackhammers kind of cut back quite a bit, but. With some of the gear that we have that, that you know of uh, that, that's available with the Apollo, we were still able to do the session, and they were none the wiser. <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. You yeah. pulled that off. <laughs> yeah. Once again, we're talking with Jerry Pelletier and George down in West Palm Beach, Florida, tonight on Voice Over Body Shop. Again, if you've got a question for him based on the, what we're talking about or whatever you want to talk about, throw it in the chat room, and we'll get that to him in a second. So we're, we're talking a little bit about geekiness. Now, George, you say that Jerry's a real geek. And you know, I you Definitely. know, I'm I'm one of those people. that's like I'm not a geek. Just use the right stuff. Do you find having all that technology really helps you, or is it just that you like the technology? As far I mean, you were talking about how you have certain filters and stuff that can help you in a pinch or in a situation. But how much do you actually do to your audio before you send it out? No, I, less is more. Less is more. But, and I have to say again, you know, having you two as a resource in the VO community is just, is priceless. And and uh, I know that if, if either Dan or George comes out to your place, Dan, George, you were out here like five years ago, I think. Jeez, I can't believe it was that long, but yeah, yeah. five and, years and ago. And the work that he did uh, being here in the studio has lasted to this day. It's been the gold standard for me. And, and really what he did was less is more. I mean, we really, all we did was, it's no added extra EQ or processing or anything like that. It's just EQing to the room. Each room has a certain sound to it. And if you can EQ maybe some of the imperfection or standing waves out of it to make it sound better, that's, that's all you use the EQ for. You don't, you don't do it for anything more than just correcting what the room sounds like or how it affects the, uh, yeah. uh, the microphone and, and to make it nominal. It's kind of like makeup. Some people... Mm. <laughs> wear enough, wear so much that it draws attention to itself. It it just, they're like, whoa, look at that makeup. And others wear like an incredibly subtle makeup. You know, they have, it's very, they're like, are they even wearing makeup? But they are, you know, and that's kind of, I just thought of this because I was traveling and you see 
all these different, you know, cultures, you know, but it's like that. It's like, uh, yeah, we're all putting on a little bit of makeup, but it's, it's the right amount. It's tastefully done. It's done in light amounts. It's a very nuanced thing. So whatever processing is going on, it's all, it's all really, really subtle stuff. And, but it's not made to make him sound better in some weird way. Right. But for me as a geek, if, if the sound quality isn't there, it affects my read. So yeah. uh, I have a problem. I have an issue. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But uh, he's gotten it to the point where it's just, I don't have to worry about that. And then Dan, I can do exactly what you've been preaching. It's all about the read and, and to work on that. And that's what I've been doing. Yeah. I mean, you, you want to be able to hit record and do what you do and not worry about it. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people, and I, and you, you probably get these questions from people, George and I get them all the time. What's the, you know, essentially what's the secret sauce that you throw in there. It's like, you know, learn how to read copy and sound like you're not reading it essentially. Once again, and, and, and go ahead. the auditions that you send in have to be clean and they, they have to be good so that when, you know, cause they're going to listen to everybody else. And some of these, these voiceover talents that are uh, have good setups, you know, I mean, I think that makes it if you if your read is good and the sound quality is kind of bad. If the read is good and the and the audio quality is good, then it's a win win. Yeah, because they're going to judge. I, I've heard or I've found that they might make a judgment of your sound quality even before they judge your uh, acting because they, they can they hear that thing that they don't like right away. And then maybe a few seconds later, they start to hear the acting, you know. As so I have a tough enough time alone with just the talent. So I better make sure the audio is pristine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the, yeah. the idea, yeah, what we like to say is, is the idea is not to sound great. It's to not sound bad. You know, you, 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 <laughs> yeah. you, you want to you sound like you and the way you sound in a conversation and like you're in the same room with somebody because they're not looking for all that, you know, like make it sound fantastic. You know, it, yeah. you'll know when it sounds bad, when it sounds good, you don't notice, you don't notice. Right. Well, let me ask right. you this. Are there, are there things that you do where there is an expectation that you send out audio that's really juiced up, gassed up, blasting, you know, math, you know, whatever. I, I, I would kinda... send out audio that is polished, if you will, a finished audio to a lot of these. And I think a lot of VO people do it where you send it to uh, a, a person who is just a, and I don't want to talk bad about them, but they're video editors and they're not going to do a thing with your audio. They just drop it in. And then when you hear it, you're like, Oh my God, you just dropped that in. You didn't do anything. You know, you didn't, you You didn't polish it up. audio And just left it there. So I will specifically ask, you know, if they want me, I'll send them both sometimes, you know, just raw audio. And then here's the polished audio. Right. And, uh, you know, use, use what you want. Uh, But there are some people that I know that I will only send them the polished audio because I know how they operate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a little bit about how you run your business. Now you say you've got a number of agents and stuff, but how do you usually pursue business? I mean, you obviously you have existing clients, but always got to be on the hunt for new ones, right? Well, I did, you know, seven years ago, I did the same thing. I did the pay to play stuff, you know, like everybody else did. And, and I've just really, uh, uh, have fallen away from that, uh, like a lot of people have. And, and now it just comes down to, you know what, you know, find out what you, I used to ski competitively, you know, uh, when I was about 40 pounds later, but, uh, you know, so for me, that's what I like. I like Alpine skiing. So go after the ski companies, vocal and, and just, you know, contact people that you have a, an interest in and, and market to those people. You know, and there's a lot of things. You, some people like bowling, some people like hockey, some people like football, you know, but just market to all the companies who make footballs or, or do that stuff. And, and, uh, those are things that you're passionate about. And, and if you have a, a good audio quality studio, then, then market to them and work for them. Yeah. Cause if you're passionate about it, then that's going to come over in the read yeah. and just your inherent knowledge about the, whatever it is you're talking about, that will also come across too. Right. I mean, it just, it's so just natural. A lot of it's just, you know, self-marketing anymore, as opposed to relying on the, 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 the pay to play cattle call. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, and then the other thing is, is Dan, and I'm sure you know, is just, I mean, the number one thing I think you can do is relationships, is the clients you do have, build a relationship with them. What I love is some of my clients feel like I'm actually on their payroll, like I'm a, a part of their staff, which is great. And, uh, well, just recently I had a, uh, through William Morris, I had a political uh, come through last week. And they scheduled it for Thursday. Then they scheduled it for early Friday, then Friday afternoon. And then it was supposed to be today. And they, they apologized so much. They said, we'll, we'll pay for any studio time. We realize that we book time with you. For me, I take that as an opportunity to actually 
go to them and say, listen, I, I realize this happens and it happens more often than you think. I'm fine with it. And so I've taken an opportunity that was bad, mostly on their part, but wanted to be part of their staff and help them out and say, don't worry about it. I'm, I've got your back. And I think you, that, that whole team player mentality. Yeah, you embolden yeah. yourself to them, you know, a little bit more and that to take it as an opportunity to do that. So sometimes uh, 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 bad things like that, if you turn them around, can actually work for you. Yeah. We got a question here from Dwayne DeSalvo, one of our fans out there. And he says, uh, he asked, uh, Jerry, do you use headphones when recording? Ah, uh, yes. yes and no. That question. Yes Good and question. no. Good answer. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you, it, usually when they were, they're looking for more of like an announcer type thing, uh, you know, uh, they never say that, but you can tell that that's what they're kind of looking for. And that's what the copy kind of dictates. I'll wear my headphones. But if they're going back to, we just want a real person read. Well, then I get my Marilyn Wisner toolbox out, take the headphones off and, and play with a Rubik's Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Distract yourself. You're right, a bit. right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, most people don't understand that, that headphones are not to hear yourself, uh, although it's a philosophical thing. The only reason you would ever wear headphones is to listen to somebody else, like the director or yeah, the producer, the something, yeah. that, that sort of thing. Well, I'll tell you another thing, yeah. Dan, too, and, and that's why w with uh, the Studio Bricks booth, I, I'm, if you've ever been to a David Letterman show when he was on, his his studio there in New York was ice cold. Yeah. Ice cold. That's what I, rem I remember hearing about that. And that's because way. it keeps him attentive and, and his guests attentive. Keeps him sharp. Yeah. Keeps everybody kind of on it. Yeah. When you're in these booths, and in fact, this, I've got a five by five, but the uh, the smaller Studio Bricks booths, you know, you, your body kicks out BTUs. I, I, I'm preaching to the choir here because a lot of people will be shaking their head that you know, it doesn't take long for those boosts to heat up to an uncomfortable level. And, and I would say that that really affects your read. It, to be in there sweating and having to do that, I, I have my booth nice, and George can attest, I have it nice and cold in there because I have sometimes two or three hour sessions, the marathon sessions. And if you're not comfortable, boy, you, I think you listen to your recording by the end of the, that session, your read is degraded as down well. Like yeah. 30% in energy level. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you can maintain your energy. Sometimes the heat actually makes your loosens up your voice a little bit too, which is mm. you know, I've done session long sessions like that, and I'm like, I'm in I'm all sweaty, but I sound really good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I earn you know, it makes it look like I worked really hard at that. You can hear the sweat. That's right. Well, Jerry, <laughs> it's been great having you on, and uh we're gonna we're gonna take a break and say goodbye, but then we're gonna record uh, next week's tech talk and we're gonna talk more about your studio, which I think is gonna be Lots of fun. So uh, excellent. Thanks for coming to Florida. Well, thank George. Happy to be here. I'm still sitting <laughs> I'll take, here. I'll shake your hand. We, we've got swag for you. Okay, great. Got swag for you, Dan. Then it's Dan's hand. <laughs> oh, there we coming go. in off. Wait, the wait, there, there, there we go. There we go. Like, <laughs> like, like, like that. Okay. No, please. it's not working. <laughs> it's <laughs> that, 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 it's that actors left. Actors right. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Jerry, thanks for being with us. You got it. All right, George and I'll be right back after these important messages. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching. VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Essentials just started their first time ever annual accessory sale. All sale items are 50% off. Now, Harlan isn't usually this generous, so get them before he reverts back to his Grinch self. All sale items are on sale on the page. Just click Deals from the top menu and then On Sale. Items like the Porta Booth Plus Travel Bag. Headphone hanger, Vox Pop stop filter, the super light shotgun shock mount, adjustable desktop microphone stand, the ABS, the legendary adjustable boom stop, the voiceover baseball cap, or again, just click deals from the top menu and then on sale. Get this stuff while he's got it on sale now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. Using your chair tonight. Good. Is it more comfortable? <laughs> no, my ass still hurts, but Okay. <laughs> well, hey everybody. It's time for me to talk about source elements and the Source Connect software that is becoming more and more well known all the time because it's the one that most of the big time production studios that do those big budget jobs are using these days. ISDN has become far and uh, much harder to get. Prices have gone through the roof, and uh, another system has supplanted ISDN. You heard Jerry say it. He was a big, big-time ISDN user for many years. That was the big dog, and now it has 
changed. The balance just shifted and Source Connect is the one you want to have. It allows you to connect your studio to other studios around the world and provide live, very good quality audio over the internet and receive that direction you're going to get from the studio. If you want to get a, a setup on your own studio, uh, in your own computer, you can get a 15-day free trial right away and for Source Connect Standard. This is Source Connect Standard, not the free Source Connect Now, a different animal, but you can play around with that too over at source-elements.com. Get that 15-day free trial up and running on your computer and you'll be ready to rock when that client says, hey, we want Source Connect. You'll be ready to go. Anyway, thanks, Source Elements. We appreciate your support. We'll be right back to wrap things up here right after this. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're listening to VoiceOver Body Shop, VOBS.TV. And we have returned. George hydrating himself. Yes, I'm sitting in air conditioning. My eyeballs are drying out, I was saying. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing is here in Southern California. I don't drink enough, but it doesn't affect me. Everybody else is like, I gotta drink lots of water, whatever. Anyhow, uh, well, that was interesting to talk to Jerry and see uh, how things are going with him uh, down there in Florida. Um, yeah. Next week on this very show, which we're about to record, uh, is uh, Tech Talk number eighteen. Rolling yeah. right along. Yeah, we, we're going to have some great hey, stuff to talk about. I got too. a lot of people thanking me for tech talks uh, at the up up in the Great White North up there in Vo North. People were very complimentary of it, so um, it's what we love to do. And everybody stick around and ask questions. Yeah, do you have a chance to go to Tim Hortons? I went to a Tim Hortons <laughs> actually I, one morning. It was the one place that was open in Montreal when I was walking around, and the line was like fifty people long at that <laughs> place. Right. <laughs> Actually, they gave Tim Hortons bags of coffee to every attendee at the event. All right. So we all came home with the coffee. Timmy Ho's. All right. Yeah, they're they're open 24, which is why they're why right. it's so great. Uh, let's see. Who are our donors of the week? There is a pile of them. Oh, you're right. Look at this. Uh, in this uh, week's queue, in the last couple of weeks, we've had donations from Patty Gibbons, Brian Page, Amanda Fellows. These are names you guys have all heard. Shelly Avellino, who I got to hang out with at Via North. Lucky she you. was awesome. So, so cool. Uh, Trey Speaks for You, who's Trey Mosley. Uh, Tom Pinto. Philip Sapir. Sarah Borges. Antland Productions, Uncle Roy. Graham Spicer. Joseph Harrison. And Christy Burns. So, right. fun seeing a few names in there that I get to got to hang out with up north absolutely you know and if you'd like to donate to the show and um you know improve our our quality if such is possible it could always be better uh and and help us maintain what we do here at voiceover body shop there is a if you're watching on our website there's a donate now button so go over to vobs.tv if you're watching on facebook or if you're watching on vobs.tv Click on the Donate Now button and, and help us out here. We really appreciate it. Right below the chat room. Yes. Please donate. You can't miss it. It's right there. Uh, hey, we'd like you to join our mailing list, too, uh, because we let you know what's going on when we do the show. So uh, click on that and join the mailing list. And come mo Sunday or Monday, you're going to know exactly what we're going to be doing in the next week. So that's a big help. Or if we have any special announcements. Plus, you can see those funny banners that Dan does for the show each time. <laughs> Tonight's was a, was a good one. I have no idea where I come up with this stuff. And, <laughs> I mean, I, I should go back to the ones where we had all the photographs and we would just plaster our face in, in famous movies and paintings <laughs> and stuff like that. Keep but, doing what you're doing. All righty. Uh, hey, and show us your booths. Yes, like uh, we've got, where am I? Jack DeGolia's new booth. Oh, it is. It is. He's not in his can closet we, anymore. You'll notice there's no clothes hanging frame? in there. Yeah. So he's Let me got see it full frame. I didn't get a good look at it yet. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's see, see the whole shot here. You can get rid of George for a second and just show me. There. There it is. Look at that. Yeah. He was using like a converted closet forever. So I think it wasn't a converted. I think it was his closet. Yeah. Like <laughs> a, it was like a super. It was a well-treated closet, but he said he needed a lower. He needed 
he was fighting the noise from the neighborhood. So yeah, he needed to right. go to the next level. We'll talk a little bit about that in our in Tech Talk next week. Because we're going to talk about mm-hmm. booths and Studio Bricks and booths in general, which should be a lot very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you know, if you want help with your home voiceover studio, you can work with George and you'll find him over at George the dot tech. That's my home on the web for all things voiceover studio tech support. And you can book me for live consults, remote or on site in LA or wherever I happen to be, or you can book me, uh, for just on uh, basically self-service stuff where you send the files and I send them back, including things like sound checks. And Dan, I know you do sound checks too. Oh, do you I? Specimen am. cup. Yeah. Over at homevoiceoverstudio.com right here. And, uh, you know, it's, it's great getting the audio from people and, and hearing, you know, how people are trying to, you know, get their audio right, listening to the suggestions that you and I give them. And uh, usually little tweaks here and there. But if you really don't know what it's supposed to sound like, you can send me a uh, a, a sample of your audio for 25 bucks. Uh, just click on the Specimen Collection Cup, and uh, I'll get right back to you, and we'll, uh, we'll make sure that you get your audio straight. So check that out as well. Uh, hey, we're on every other Monday live. Uh, and if you'd like to be here in our studio in Los Angeles, even when George is actually here too, uh, we'd love to have you here. Just write to us at the guys at VOBS.TV and say, I am going to be around on such and such a date in the greater Los Angeles area. Or I live in Sherman Oaks or Studio City. I'd love to come see the show. Or Pasadena mm-hmm. or Glendale or one of those great little towns here in Southern California. We'd love to see you here and uh, and party with us here on a Monday night and uh, have some fun. Watch how we do the show. Um, so that's going to do it for us tonight. You know, we need to thank our sponsors, though, because they're really important, mm-hmm. like Harlan Hogan's Voice Over Essentials. Who also do, uh, sponsored VO North, by the way. Wow. Uh, Voice Over Extra. Source Elements. VO Heroes. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And... And J. Michael Collins Demos. All righty. We also need to thank the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. Uh, Mike Merlino on chat room duty tonight, doing a great job. Uh, his mom, Sue Merlino, our technical director, she does a great job every week, and we're yes. thrilled that she does that. And Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. All right, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, we've got Tech Talk coming up next week, and we're going to record it for you right now live. So stay tuned for that. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body shot. Or VO BS. We'll see you, kids. Later. All right.